Welcome to another episode of the Manufacturing Executive Podcast. I'm Joe Sullivan, your host and a co-founder of the industrial marketing agency, Gorilla76. So let's transport ourselves back in, in time, about 10 years. It's 2010. Apple had just released a new product called the iPad. The Lakers had just won their fifth championship under Phil Jackson. The BP oil spill was all over the news. And in the marketing world, there was a trending movement starting to take hold called inbound marketing. The term inbound marketing is common speak now, and it has been for a while, but I'd be willing to bet that most of you in the manufacturing sector listening to this uh, would have probably stared at me with glazed over eyes if I asked you to tell me what inbound marketing is 10 years ago. Today, my guest is someone who has witnessed firsthand and also contributed to, in a lot of ways, the explosion of inbound marketing in the B2B world over the last decade. Brian Signorelli is the Senior Director of Partner Acquisition at HubSpot where his teams work with marketing, sales, CRM consulting, and other professional service companies to help them grow their own businesses and their clients' businesses faster. He regularly writes, develops, and presents inbound sales content for HubSpot's solution partners and their customers. He's been with HubSpot since 2012 and has seen the company grow from 5,000 customers through its 2014 IPO to over 80,000 today. Prior to that, Brian worked as an analyst for a management consulting firm as well as a small startup in the Boston area. He resides in Boston, Massachusetts with his wife, Leah, and their dog, Dixie. Brian, it's been a while since you and I have talked, and I've been looking forward to this conversation ever since you made my day a few weeks ago by agreeing to come on the show. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy that we um, you know, first, uh, first talked, I mean, you know, what, about eight years ago now, and it's... Uh, it's great to you know been uh, to stay in touch with you over the years and see your your business do well and um, you know it was great to get an invite from you to to jump on the podcast so I'm happy to happy to be on with you today. I guess before we get into this topic of inbound, can you kind of briefly tell our listeners just a little bit more about you and, and your journey to this point and and also for anybody listening who doesn't really know much about HubSpot, which is probably a small percentage of people at this point given the the, the brand's name at this point, but. Um, Give us a little bit about you and, and an overview of what HubSpot is and what the software does. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to. Um, so I think you know this, um, but so, you know, I, before I came to HubSpot, I was actually a HubSpot customer. Um, and I was working with a, a buddy of mine and his dad and a few other people. We we're trying to get this little startup called Gifts on Time going. And uh, I was hired to basically be like, kind of the head of sales slash marketing slash other stuff. I mean, you know how it goes with a small business, uh, kind of did everything. And when I started working with them, um, the product was like just about to come to market and they're like, okay, great. Like we need to start like generating awareness and generate leads and website traffic and get signups and get some like revenue here. Like, cause we've invested a lot and we want to get this business going. And I said, yeah, marketing lead gen, like seems easy enough. Like, sure. I'll do that. It's really hard, obviously, for anyone who, you know, has worked in the marketing profession or in sales. It's like really, really hard. And so we spent, I mean, I'm not kidding. We, we literally spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on um, website, website design. Uh, we hired an SEO specialist. We hired a pay-per-click specialist. We uh, did trade shows. We did advertisements in local newspapers. We did advertisements in national, uh, rags and all, all that type of stuff. We tried, we tried literally, it felt like we tried literally every known outbound marketing. I didn't know it was called outbound then, but I just was like, this is what marketing is. And we tried every one of the tactics we thought marketing was, and we just got crickets. Like it was 2002. This is like 2009 or 2010. Actually, this is 2010. So, you know, good intro. Um, and we're just like, this is crazy. Like, how are we, how are we putting so much money and effort into all these marketing efforts and like literally getting nothing for it? And so we were, we were, uh, frankly, we were down to our last ten or fifteen thousand dollars of budget that we had for for marketing, and we had a choice between hiring another marketing agency versus using HubSpot on our own. And at the time, um we had decided to use HubSpot. Uh, it's not to say that using an agency would have been a bad idea, but like they, they were, they were basically only managing like our social media profile. Uh, they were doing the trade show stuff, helping us design booths. Like 
it was stuff that we were basically already doing and it wasn't, it wasn't fundamentally different. And so anyway, we started using HubSpot on our own. Um, we, I think within the first week of getting it up and running, writing our first blog post, our first call to action, our first landing page, um, we generated something like 40 leads right away. And wow. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. This works so well. It ultimately, like ultimately six months in, like we didn't stick to it. Um, because it's hard. It's hard to write. It's hard to write a lot of blog posts that are actually good and worth reading. It is really hard to develop premium content like eBooks, white, uh, white papers, uh, you know, diagnostic tools, like things that people are willing to give a little bit of content information for. And so I'd certainly, you know, anyone who's considering or who hasn't, you know, adopted the concept of inbound marketing, I would highly encourage you to consider working with an agency unless you really feel like you've got a lot of time, a full, a full staff that is like kind of mastered this, knows what they're doing, like is, is ready to, to go and you'd prefer to keep everybody in house. Um, anyway, fast forward to today, I've been HubSpot for, for eight years. I've been uh, on the sales team for the entire time. I've worked with basically uh, our, our uh, marketing agency partners, our sales partners, our integration partners, um, I've held various roles uh, as an individual contributor, different management roles. Um, and, and yeah, it's been really cool to see HubSpot's kind of growth and journey, um, you know, over the, over those past, you know, almost past decade now. So happy to elaborate further, but that's probably more than, uh, you were, you were betting on there. No, that's great. So, I mean, you've seen some serious changes to the marketing landscape, you know, not only in, inside your company at HubSpot, but in general across the marketing landscape in the last eight or nine years or so. I mean, and you know, as I suggested earlier, inbound marketing wasn't really even common language for most businesses back in the early 2010s. Like what do you think drove this explosion of in terms of the acceptance of inbound marketing and it's the spread of its popularity? Yeah. So, you know, if you wind the clock, I mean, my take on this is that it just takes time for people to change and to kind of like get with the program. And so if you think about, don't worry, I'm not going to take you through a play by play the last 20 years, but if you think about the last 20 years, um, you know, the internet only kind of became widely available, like in the late nineties, early two thousands. And, you know, people were highly suspicious of it. I mean, I, I remember like, you know, I, frankly, I was probably a teenager, you know, a kid. I was really a teenager at that point. I remember wanting to buy something off of eBay. And my mom was like, be really careful with the internet. Like you don't know who's <laughs> out there. And, um, and, and it takes a long time for businesses to like realize that, okay, like what the internet represents, it's, it's not like, it's not just like I need a website to like prove to people I exist in the world. It's, Oh my gosh, this is actually a way that it, I mean, it's really, it was really Google that fundamentally transformed the way that we, we find information. I mean, like just think of the simple concept of like, whenever you have any question, someone's like, Oh, I don't know about blah, blah, blah. Like just Google it, just Google it, just Google it. Well, what that means for businesses is if you are not coming up in the search results on the first page, when someone is asking questions that is, uh, relevant to your subject matter expertise, to your domain, to your products, to your services, if you're not showing up, then you don't exist. Um, and so I think from 2000, 2010, a lot of people were like, yeah, like we need a website. Like we need some digital presence. Like, I don't really know exactly what we're doing, but we need something. And then I saw this kind of second wave of like, oh, we need content. But do you remember like probably 2000, I don't know, five, 2010, there was a lot more content online but a lot of it was like paid. So you had to pay like $500 or $1,000 or $3,000 for like, for, for content. And then, you know, it wasn't HubSpot necessarily. I think that like HubSpot was part of that. Um, but I think people started realizing like, oh my gosh, like we can actually start generating a bunch of like website traffic and leads if we give our content away for free, especially if it's of something of value to people. And so, you know, the kind of evolution is like, you know, if you think about like sales and marketing in the context of the internet over the past 20 years, you know, before Google, all the control was frankly in the hands of sellers. Like if you're a buyer, you needed to call a company to actually get access to information. Uh, and the seller, 
kind of could hide behind this cloak of, you know, or this kind of iron curtain of like, well, you know, you need me to like understand what it is that, you know, we do and what your options are, et cetera. Google flipped that equation. Like all the power is now, I mean, just the internet, Google, whatever you, however you want to refer to it, all the power shifted away from the seller and into the hands of the buyer. And so now, you know, I think businesses have realized that like, because buyers can do all this research on their own, they can basically get answers to almost any question they want on their own without ever talking to a sales rep. I think that's kind of what is, what has driven this change and, and driven this adoption of inbound marketing of like, look, like if I want to exist, if I want anybody's attention, if I want anybody's interest, we need to actually be adding value in some, some way that lines up with the way people frankly consume information these days, which is really through Google searches. That's, that's really all it is. Yeah, I think you nailed it. I think that's right on the money. You know, and the, the shift in power from seller to buyer has just been so transformational. I mean, there's, it's, the expectation is now that you're going to be able to obtain this information, and and if you're if you're not the one publishing it, your competitor is, and who's going to you know who's going to have the visibility, who's going to be the first to gain trust and attention. Well, wh whoever's putting the insights out there, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like you just, you have to, you have to, and you know, we'll, we'll get to this, but like, you know, um, you, you have to be adding value in some way that, you know, your competitor isn't, or that, you know, um, is going to help your buyer just kind of get to the point of being ready to, to make a purchase or even consider a purchase for that matter. And, um, they're, they're, there, I mean, why, I mean, think, just think about the world we're living in. It's the age of convenience. Like everything mm -hmm. is available on demand. Why would I ever pick up the phone to call a business to learn about them when I can accomplish all of that on my own terms, in my own time, at any hour of the day that I want? And so I'd much rather talk to the 24 seven sales rep, so to speak, which should be your website, as long as it actually has like meaningful blog content, resources, pricing information, uh, and if I, it's not there, like I'm going to find it on Quora, I'm going to find it on other review sites. Like I'm going to find it somehow. Uh, but I'd much rather do that on my own time and on my own terms than talk to one of your sales reps, frankly. And that's coming from someone who is, or has been a sales rep. Yep. Makes total sense. And I think that the, um, you know, the pushback that I've heard from time to time is, well, you can't replace, you can't replace a salesperson, a real human conversation with a website or with written content. But I think people are missing the point when they make that argument. You know, if your buyer is already out there looking for information on the own, on their own, and the expectation is they're going to be able to obtain it, you need to be the one providing it. And that content's not there to replace the human being in a lot of cases, especially in complex, um, you know, B2B, buying processes, right? There's, but it's going to be the first step. It's the first step in the sale is, you know, the first interaction somebody has with you is going to be your content and whatever you're able to put out there online. And, and not until you've, you know, earned enough of their, their attention and trust that, you know, maybe you understand their issue. You've seen it before. You've got, you, you could help them solve it. You know, it's not until they have that sense of confidence that they're going to pick up the phone and call you. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like they're, they're going to consume, I can't remember the most recent stat from like the content marketing Institute, but it's something like, you know, the average buyer is going to consume, you know, seven to 15 different pieces of content before they ever even engage with your sales rep. So yep. if you aren't making a really strong first impression um, and giving your perspective would be buyers, access to information that they are looking for before they are even ready to talk to one of your sales reps, then mm -hmm. you will never even, your sales reps will never even have the at bats. They'll never even have the chance to have that conversation. And that's the whole point. It's like, look, mm -hmm. we're not trying to replace sales reps. It's just, if you want to give your sales reps as many at bats as possible, you will do inbound slash content marketing. Like that is how people are generating leads these days. Yep. Right on. Well, let's talk more about content for a minute while we're sure. sort of on that topic. So, um, you know, I've been consulting manufacturers specifically now for about a decade and they, manufacturers love talking about their products. They love talking about themselves mm -hmm. and what they do and how great their customer service is. And, um, you know, I, I always say that there's absolutely a place for that, but it's not, 
nobody wants that information until they are in the process of actually vetting you. Um, and they need to first believe that you understand their issues and goals. And, and it's really those things that I, th- I believe your content needs to address. And so can you, can you talk a little bit from your perspective, Brian, about what, you know, what role you think content should play and especially during those early stages of an often long and complex buyer's journey? Absolutely. So, um, are you familiar with, um, I mean, like I, I read this book probably a year or two ago that just like, I have not been as excited about a book since I learned like what inbound marketing was and I read like Brian Halligan and Darmesh Shah's, uh, inbound marketing. Um, are you familiar with story brand by any chance yes. by Don Miller? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this one just like popped for me. I'm like, Oh my gosh, like he's got it right. Okay. So here, here's the thing. Um, the premise of that book is basically, look, like you need to clarify, you need to clarify your message, uh, to your buyers and where, where most businesses get it wrong with content marketing or just really marketing in general is that they view themselves as the hero in the hero's journey. And you need to flip that equation. So like briefly walk you through it. I've got the infographic pulled up just so I remember Mm -hmm. this seven stages of the seven ish stages of the hero's journey. There is a character, the hero, who has a problem, who meets a guide, and that guide gives them a plan, part four. Then the guide calls them to action, step five, and that step six results in either uh, realizing their hopes, their dreams, their goals, or ends in tragedy uh, that they're trying to avoid, right? And what really just popped to me was that where most businesses get it wrong is that they view themselves and it's reflected, frankly, like when you said, you know, these companies they want to talk about their products and how great they are and their services and how awesome they are. Um, that is a reflection of you thinking that you are the hero in the buyer's journey. You are not the hero in the buyer's journey. Your customer is the hero in the buyer's journey and your content needs to take them through that journey uh, you are simply the guide. So like your customers, your customers are Luke Skywalker. You are Yoda as the business doing all your marketing. I think that, that, that is the, that's like the main thing that, that businesses miss. It's like, look, you need to, you need to basically paint this picture to help your customers understand that like you understand them, that you are giving them a very, like you understand what their, what their fears are. You understand what their challenges are. You have a plan you are calling them to action to execute on that plan. And if they execute on that plan, they will realize their, their hopes, their dreams, their business, I mean, their business goals, whatever, whatever those success outcomes they're looking for. That is the role that your business should be playing in that kind of, you know, in that hero's journey. And it, and it, and it, and it, it might sound crazy, but I'm telling you, take a page out of the Hollywood playbook for how movies are written. Um, apply that to your own marketing. I am like, 110, like all my chips are in on that concept of like how businesses should be thinking about marketing these days. Yeah. I love, I love story brand. I, I stumbled across it through a few different sources um, probably six months ago as well and, and read it and immediately loved it. I, I think it's a perfect analogy really. Um, and it's, it's such a logical thing too, to think about, you know, it's about your customer, right? Like there's, it's such a cliche in business, but then people don't practice it. So I love having an analogy that, you know, is about making the customer the hero. You're there to guide them. You're to help. You're here to help them understand their problem, figure out different ways to get to the solution, and that's the role of your content. So, like to make it a little more tangible, talk to me a little bit about about content. What could content be for a business to business company? Like what role or what what form could that take? Um, you know, like I love Marcus Sheridan's stuff, right? Where he talks about like. Um, you know, problem-based content and comparison content and yeah. review-based content. Like what, what do you see that works? It's super simple. Yeah. I've been saying this for eight years. Yeah. At least, um, you know, 2010, well, 2012, I started HubSpot and obviously I had the problem of saying like, Hey, like, you know, I've noticed your website doesn't have a blog and people like basically laughing me out of the room being like, what the hell is a blog? Like, why would I ever use one? It's like, well, who's laughing now? Um, however, um, for people who like actually entertain it, they're like, okay, look, like, all right, I'll blog. Like, I'll just like, I'll, I'll, I'll take a bet on you. Like I will blog. I have a problem. What do I blog about? 
what do I write? Like, what, what content do I write about? And I said, this is going to sound overly simplistic, but I'm telling you, this is, this is what works. You should write content that answers the questions that your prospects are asking. So like, think about the, the easiest way to generate like your next hundred blog articles is to sit down with your sales team, with your support team, your customer service team, and just say, hey, look, like, tell me the top two or three most common questions that you're getting from our prospects, from our customers, whoever it is. Um, and I guarantee you that, like, all you do is you take, you take, okay, here, like, you take what their questions are, you then flip, you flip the question into a statement. Uh, so, for example, like, you know, someone for HubSpot might be saying like, you know, I'm really struggling to like generate more leads. How do I generate, how do I generate more leads? The blog article itself or like an ebook or a white paper, whatever, like whatever kind of premium piece of content would be something like five proven strategies to generate more leads to your website. It's literally just taking the question, flipping it around, making it a statement. And then the best part is if you know what you're talking about and you should, because whatever questions they're asking you, your company should be, you know, a subject matter expert in. Um, and if you don't have people who are good writers, again, hire Joe and his team. Um, you just literally answer the questions that people are asking. It's a very simple equation. You mm -hmm. don't need to overthink this. Um, of course, there's a bunch of finer points of, you know, content architecture and making sure that your website is optimized to, you know, to get found and you're promoting the content. There's a lot more that goes to it. You can't just write a blog article and be like, okay, I'm done. I can walk away. Uh, but in terms of getting the, the meat of it, it's literally just answering the questions that people are asking because your hope is when they are Googling some question that they have, you want to show up first, second, third, just not any later than 10th, but like hopefully in the top 10 is when you're going to mm -hmm. show up. And if your answers are showing up when they're asking Google questions, then guess who's going to get the attention? Your business, not your competitor. Yep. Absolutely. Nailed it. And, and you know, if you're, you're, let's just say you're a manufacturer, you're, you're a uh, automation service provider or something like that, you know, and, and you hear from your customers and struggling with, you know, downtime on the plant floor, or, um, you know, cost of labor or, or whatever it is. Um, n now you address that that way, you know, here are ways you can uh, reduce downtime. You know, there's your blog post, right? Five, five proven ways to reduce downtime or something yeah. like that. Like there's, there's a million ways to do it, but let your, let those common questions that your sales team's hearing over and over again. And the, those things that you're, those problems you're trying to solve for your customers form the foundation of your content. And now when you start, you know, people will find you, they'll, there will be context for a conversation with them um, when it gets to that point. So I think it's a perfect framework. Yeah. So simple, right? Yep. It is very simple. Very simple. So you published your book inbound selling in 2018 where you sort of extend these principles of inbound marketing into the sales side of an organization. Um, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, what, what, what's the topic of the book? What does inbound selling mean as opposed to inbound marketing? Yeah. I mean, inbound selling is really just sort of like, okay, well, if inbound marketing is any form of marketing designed to develop someone's trust and kind of like at least get them to um, feel comfortable exchanging a little bit of information, like even their, their first name, last name, email, um, inbound selling is literally the next step in that process. Uh, so if you're changing the way you're doing marketing and you're starting to generate these kind of inbound leads to your website, um, what, where I've seen most businesses really fail is that they might be very successful generating a lot more website traffic, generating a lot more inbound leads. But then the sales team is like, these leads are garbage. Like, I can't sell to these people. And the reality is, sure, are some of the leads garbage? Yeah, they probably are. But I think the problem is that most salespeople, uh, and this is not true everywhere, of course, but like certainly over the past 10 years, salespeople have had to adopt the way they actually think about engaging leads. It's not like the cold call, the pitch, like, hey, you know, I caught you out of the blue, but like you have five minutes to talk. That's not what it's about. Like, that's not how you approach an inbound lead. Um, so, the idea of the, the book inbound selling is really just a reflection. I mean, it, it's, it's literally the HubSpot sales playbook. It's everything that I've learned at HubSpot over the past, you know, well, I published it two years ago. So, you know, the first five years at HubSpot, um, everything that is in that book is still 
true for how HubSpot sells today. And it really kind of guides businesses through rethinking the way that their sales team needs to engage buyers in the age of convenience, in the age of content marketing, uh, to, make your, to make sure you're getting the most out of those investments. And you know, it goes on to and talks a little bit about kind of cross-functional alignment, about managing sales teams, developing people. Uh, I had a really uh, kind of funky, but I thought interesting chapter from a sales futurist named uh, Derek Wazinski. The last chapter is kind of talking about this dystopian future of sales and where we could theoretically be heading in the next you know, 20 or 30 years. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really it. It's just sort of like, all right, look, marketing's done its job. Most people got with the program. They're like, okay, good. Like, got it. Website should be more than just like a brochure. Uh, it should be a lead generator. It should be an educator for my potential prospects. Inbound selling is literally just that extension. It's the next step of like, okay, great. Like you're doing all this work. You made a huge investment to like actually get more website traffic and leads. Don't screw it up. Make sure your sales team actually understands how to work these leads. Cause it's frankly, a, it, it's a bit, it's a bit different. Um, than what they are used to, especially if they, you know, have been around the block a few times and have sold from say, like, I don't know, the year 1990 through the year 2010, like the way sales worked then. Um, there are a lot of things that are still true today, certainly. Uh, but there are a lot of things that aren't true that you have to do differently today. And, and that's kind of what inbound selling, um, gets at the heart of. Well, it's such an important topic. And I see this, you know, the really time and time again, I see this disconnect between marketing and sales in, in the manufacturing companies that we consult where what you said is exactly true that you know, they're used to maybe leads like a request a quote lead or a, like an RFQ form submission is so different than somebody who is say downloading a white paper or subscribing to your newsletter. Um, but you know, a, a, a more traditional salesperson is inclined to kind of just treat it the same way. Oh, the, oh I have a new lead. I'm going to call them and try to sell them something. Yeah. Not going to work. Right. No, um, and so, yeah, I think it's a great topic. I think it's a book everybody should check out. Um, because I, I see this literally 90% of the time, like there's an adjustment to be made to selling this way when you start to really, you know, see that inbound funnel start working for you. Right. So, well, um, you know what, Brian, last question I'll ask you here, you know, lots changed in the last 10 years or so, as we've talked about, like, where do you, where do you see things headed next with B2B marketing and sales? Yeah. So, uh, three things I'll touch on for that. Um, and I've thought a lot about this for, I guess the past decade and try to pay attention to like, you know, what mm -hmm. businesses are doing, where things are going. Um, I think one thing that, um, you're going to see more and more of, I think you're already starting to see more of is um, now that everyone's doing content marketing, uh, how do you stand out? And I think that one of the things that you'll see more and more businesses doing over the next, you know, two, three, five years is creating uh, primary research, doing original research studies on their own and creating insights and creating original information that no one can find anywhere else. That is one of like the main keys, I think, to standing out today. And frankly, as a sales rep, like one of, one of the things I always tell my sales team is like, look, if you cannot provide information to your prospect that they, that they can find on their own or that, they, that they'd be able to find on their own otherwise, then you by definition have no value. Mm -hmm. So if you're writing blog content that like is kind of well known about topics that have kind of been established and there's like kind of information insight that like, frankly, you can get on 15 other, you know, 15 other websites, you're not going to stand out. So I think one, one thing you'll see, and it, it's hard, uh, but I think there'll be more kind of original research done. And I think the companies that do that will really stand out. The second thing, and this is, um, you, you might remember uh, a guy by the name of Pete Caputa. He's the CEO of Databox. He was the founder of the agency partner program at HubSpot. He clued me into a, another marketing strategy that they've had phenomenal success with. Um, and he said, you know, I think, he said, I think the, the place that a lot of marketers are getting it wrong today is that they think they should be marketing to their audience. And he's like, I think that's wrong. They should actually be marketing with their audience. And so what he does is he basically, you know, like we said, we have a bunch of these kind of like uh, questions that prospects are asking, but instead of answering these questions himself at Databox, he actually sends these questions out to all of his like newsletter subscribers, his customers and says, Hey, like I'm writing a blog article. Uh, I'm looking for experts like you to contribute some of your thoughts to this. 
you know, would you, would you be interested in writing a little snippet? We'll feature you on our blog, so on and so forth. The really cool part about that is, you know, you're making your prospects and your customers kind of, I wouldn't say famous, but like, you know, giving them a little bit of street cred with their peers. Um, you're also offering to drive an inbound link back to their website. And often they will do the same for you, which kind of helps you drive more and more marketing. I think it's in a really early stage, but I think Pete is on to something and I, and I, I can't say that I've seen a ton of businesses adopt this yet. I mean, I, I, I know you see a lot of these like roundups and like, you know, insights from the top 10 influencers and blah, blah, blah. I think businesses are getting, cl- marketers are getting closer to the right strategy there, but I think you're going to see more and more of that over time is, you know, stop marketing to your audience, market with your audience. I think that's like an interesting paradigm shift. And then the third thing that I would point to is I think so many businesses are missing the mark with leveraging their customer base um, as a source of frankly, new business. Like if you think about how hard it is to win new accounts versus grow existing accounts, or, you know, it's not to say that, you know, you, you want to rely purely on net new lead gen to, um, to grow your business. Um, But your, your customers have already made the investment. They've already taken the bet on you. They've already had, hopefully, an amazing experience with you. And so I just think that there's, you know, and I see it a little bit in B2C. I mean, you know, companies like, you know, Uber, Zoom, Slack. I mean, like, there's all these business, even the B2C apps. I mean, you know, it's always like, here's your referral code. Refer a friend, get $10, $15 off, whatever. I'm not suggesting that industrial manufacturers should be offering $15 redemption codes to, like, make referrals. But I think... And I don't, I don't know what's right. I'm not, I'm not an expert in that space. Um, but I would challenge you all to think, you know, what more can we be doing to drive awareness for our business um, by turning our customers into promoters of our business in a way that balances the value equation? We're like, what do they get in exchange for what they're giving? Um, I don't know exactly what that looks like. Probably take some creative people to figure that out, uh, to think through it. But like, don't underestimate the value of your customer base because they are the ones that have already made that bet on you. Like figure out how to turn them into promoters of your business. And then that will continue powering the, the kind of flywheel that we talk about at HubSpot. Great answers. Yeah. Really thoughtful response. And, you know, and per your numbers two and three there, like I, what I really like is they're both about there's you're delivering value and, and getting something in return, like just through, through partnerships and relationships, right. Where you, you're creating content with your, um, with your potential customer, you're putting the spotlight on them. It's not that different from a podcast where you might be interviewing, um, you know, potential future customers so that you can hear from them, build a relationship with them, um, learn, you know, then their peers can learn from that and, and it sort of spreads and, and you're, you know, in your last example, uh, you know, leveraging those relationships with clients, you know, creating value for them in some way, and they are happy to return that to you. So I think you're onto something. I think, I think it's right on the money. We shall see. We'll see. <laughs> well, awesome. Brian, uh, great conversation. Um, really appreciate you, you coming on there. Just a lot of, a lot of really great insights from somebody who's been there to see the, the rise and explosion of inbound along the way. I'm sure it's been an interesting perspective being inside of HubSpot, who's really yes. was kind of, has kind of been at the forefront of all, all this. Yeah. Um, can you tell listeners where they can connect with you online, where they can find your book in, uh, inbound selling and also yeah. where they can, uh, learn more about HubSpot? Yeah, absolutely. Um, happy to connect with, any, connect with anybody on LinkedIn. There are, as hard as it may be believed, there are more. There are multiple Brian Signorellis online. Um, no kidding. So yeah, just make sure that if you connect with me, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm the only one in the Boston area. Uh, so I am in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, yeah. So LinkedIn, Brian Signorelli. Uh, happy to connect with with anybody. Uh, yeah, the book Inbound Selling um, is available on Amazon, a bunch of other places. Amazon's probably the easiest if you want to check it out. Uh, it's also an audio book if you prefer audio books. Um, and yeah, HubSpot, HubSpot.com um, or, you know, reach out to me through LinkedIn. I'm happy to get you connected with uh, anybody who, you know, can answer questions you might have um, or help you in some way. We also have a bunch of free products if you want to try before uh, you want to talk to anybody. We try to walk the walk on that. So um, yeah. 
Beautiful. Yeah. HubSpot definitely practices what they preach. So there's a lot of great resources you can find there just, just for learning purposes, even before you'd be ready for the software potentially. So, um, all right, well, Brian, thanks a ton for joining. Uh, again, great conversation. And for the rest of you, I hope to catch you on the next episode of the manufacturing executive.